And Mass Entertainment introduces a brand new free-to-play game. The creators behind the upcoming MOBA Gigantic laid off a significant portion of their studio. All that and more, I'm Zach Sharps, and this is Free to Play Weekly. To kick us off this week, and Mass Entertainment revealed that they're adding an all-new free-to-play game into their lineup. Battle Plans, which the company is billing as a unique twist on the RTS genre, will eventually be available for both mobile and PC players. Battle Plans splits offensive battles and defensive planning into two separate areas of the game, while also allowing players to lead attacks on territories controlled by NPCs or other players. Right now, if you're interested in the title, Enmass is gearing up for a closed beta test of the PC version, so be sure to hit up their official website for more information. GameForge announced a brand new update for its free-to-play digital card game Hex Shards of Fate. Titled The Chronicles of Enrath, the new update offers a simplified introduction with a brand new tutorial. Also included is new dungeons and quests along with 200 free cards for those just starting out. I've played Hex off and on in the past, but I really felt the progression wasn't quite there just yet. However, with this update, I'll likely give it another shot. Are you guys playing Hex? Leave me a comment down below. For those of you still counterattacking your way to victory within Blade and Soul, you'll be happy to hear that the free-to-play title has released its first content expansion, Rising Waters. This update brings forth new levels, new events, and a whole lot more. Both Bloodshade Harbor, which is a 4 or 6 player dungeon, and Nightshade Harbor, which is a 24 player version of the previous mention, has been added, along with Mushin's Tower, which provides 7 floors of a heroic single player experience. All this packed in alongside their Valentine's Day events, which offers new costumes, bundles, quests, rewards, and more. That's a pretty hefty update. Speaking of hefty things, NCSoft's latest financials have come back and everything has seen growth. How will much growth you might ask? Well, Guild Wars 2's revenue is up $31.2 million, or 80% because of its Heart of Thorns expansion, and all of NCSoft's other titles have seen growth as well. But the big story is Wildstar, which has been in decline for 5 straight quarters and never reported a quarter over quarter increase. Quarter 4 was a whole different story though due to the free-to-play conversion the game went under. How did it do? Well, luckily for Carbine they saw an increase in revenue from $1.4 million all the way to $2.2 million, which is an increase of 54%. Certainly not a huge total in terms of dollars, however much much better than what they had last quarter and provides a good bit of hope for the future. In total, NCSoft's operating profit was up 48%, net income is up 28%, so certainly much to be happy about in their offices. Those of you highly anticipating the upcoming free-to-play MOBA Gigantic might have saw some bad news drop this week. Due to a dire financial situation, the company is laying off what it's calling a significant portion of its studio staff. According to a post by the CEO and co-founder, the company is currently unable to continue supporting the entire studio, although they are in active and promising discussions with investors. Overall, if meeting with investors doesn't pan out well, the game could take a gigantic hit in terms of development speed and the quality of the final product. It's always sad to hear for those developing that this is happening, but hopefully they will find a new home or get hired shortly. That said, it's time for the question of the week. Last week on the show, I asked what you guys thought about H1Z1's move to the buy-to-play model and their decision to split the game up into two. A user by the name of Mo1990 stated the following, H1Z1 devs want to milk the cow. Short but sweet and agreed upon comment by most of you folks within the community. As always guys, if you want your comment possibly featured in next week's show, make sure to leave a comment down below. This week's question is, regarding development studio layoffs, how does it affect your hype? Personally, if a game is appealing to me, it won't affect me much unless it's significant like in the case of Gigantic's team. However, I'm curious how it affects you all. Last up in the news this week, Tron is preparing to drop a massive update for the free-to-play sandbox MMO Trove. Titled Mantle of Power, the expansion is set to add a new level cap, gem system, mounts, and more. MMORPG.com got a preview of this update, and lead developer Andrew Krosnick stated that the main focus of it is building on Trove's progression. 
adding in 10 new levels for each class, which brings the max level to 30, while opening up new item slots will do a good job of this. Plus, adding in the new gem system will also provide players a greater chance at class customization. In addition to all of this comes forth a power ranking system that takes into account everything a player does to progress their account. The higher this rank becomes, the more worlds players will gain access to. I always tend to call myself a progression addict, so if I were actually playing Trove right now, I'd have nothing but good things to say about this upcoming update. Speaking of addicting things, make sure to head on over to our giveaways page on MMOBomb.com, bookmark the page, and also be sure to show our social media some love to ensure you never miss breaking news within the free-to-play space. As for myself, signing out until next week's show, my name is Zach Sharps and I'll catch you guys next time.